Koleginice i kolege, otvoram sesiju posvećenu našem kolegi i prijatelju Pegi Hrnjaku i pre nam što počnem s radom sesije, pozdravim vas da mi u tom čutanja odamo poštu Pegi. Ja bih prvo pozvao profesora Todorovića da se obrati skupu, on je izrazio želju da kaže neko reč o Pegi. Pa, izvolite profesor. Tužno je to što moram da se opraštam od mog kolege, mog bivšeg studenta i našeg velikog prijatelja i drugara koji je stano bio gost na našim kongresima KGH, Ja sam mu se javio, to je mogo da bude kraj jula meseca, dok je bio živ, naravno, i pitao sam ga, ne znajući uopšte da boluje i da mu je situacija teška, pitao ga da li namerava da dođe na naš kongres kao i obično. On se uzdržao, napravio mi kompliment i kaže, prilike, ala vera, vama na energiji, ja više nemam ni energiju, ni moći da dolazim, ja ću izostati i neću doći. On je posle dve nedelje umro. Evo, ja vidim, sad zapukam. To je za Pegu, divnog prijatelja i unosioca, to će se vjerovatno danas i čuti, ovo je jedna od najvećih nagrada Međunarodnog instituta za hlađenje. Sećam se da je govorio i zahvalio se, bio je sa čerkom i sa ženom, bilo je to negdje u Pragu. Koje godine, ne mogu da se sve. Ništa, naše poštovanje i ako nekog bude ovde iz familije, da će neki prisutni ovde, uvijek će mu se i naći ja dok sam živ, a vi i u bliži i dalje budućnosti. To je to. Ja ću prvo da se izvinim onima koji su bili na Mašinskom fakultetu, na komemorativnoj sednici koju smo tamo održali. Što je početni deo, praktično nešto što ste možda već čuli tamo, tako da, eto, ja nisam imao bolju verziju Pegine biografije, samo sam na kraju dodao nešto malo o KGH, tako da, eto, ako ste već čuli, izvinite. Dakle, doktor Preda Hrnjak, redovni profesor u penziji, je rođen 5. augusta 1952. godine u Beogradu, gde je završio osnovnu školu i gimnaziju. Za postignute uspeh je bio nagrađen diploma Vuk Karadžić i Mihajlo Petrović Alas. Na Mašinskom fakultetu Univerzitetu u Beoradu upisao se na Mašinski fakultet, upisao se 1971. godine, diplomirao u roku 1976. sa prosječnom ocenom tokom petogodišnjih studija 8.72. Diplomski rad je radi iz predmeta rastladni uređaj sa temom analiza procesa smrzavanja namirnica i projekat pločnostog aparata za brzo smrzavanje i ocenjen maksimum ocenom 10. Za isti rad PEG je nagrađen oktobarskom nagradom grada Beograda za najbolje stručne i naučne radove studenata u 1976. godini. Što se tiče njegove inženjerske i naučne karijere u Srbiji, znači od 1976. do 1995. godine, odmah nakon završetka studija, 1976. zaposlio se industriji raspadnih i klima uređaja Frigostre, gde je radio skoro četiri godine, sve do februara 1980. Pega je u toku svoje inženjerske karijere u Frigostroju učestvao na velikom broju projekata od kojih se izdvajaju stajeći značajniji. Izrada glavnog projekta rastanja instalacija za fabriku gotovih jela Frikom, izrada glavnog projekta izvođenja rastanja instalacija za industriju mesa konzervi 29. novembra Subotica, izrada glavnog projekta izvođenja konstrukcije rastanja instalacije za fabriku plastičnih cevi Ruma Plast Ruma. Tu su još i mnogi drugi projekti za koje je radio na izradi posebnih delova tehničnog dokumentacije kao i na samom izvođenju istih. Ostvario je preko 30 značajnih inženjerskih referenciji, a samo neke od njih su Apatin Kapivara, Pik Kikinda, Pik Aleksinac, Prva Iskra Barić, Agroplod Resen, Poljoprivrednik Kovačica, Pivka Zemun, Merkur Impor Skoplje, Univerzal Beče i Dunav Čelarevo, Odbras Komerci itd. 
Pošto je regulisao svojnu, vojnu obvezu u Jugoslovenskoj narodnoj armiji 1977. upisao je pod diplomske studije na Mašakom fakultetu na grupi za termotehniku s osmerenjem za rastlonu tehniku. Magistarski rad je odbranio 9. januara 1984. pod nazivom Matematički model dinamičkog ponašanja sprege i sparivač termoeksplozivni ventil. Početkom 1980. godine prešao je da radi na Mašakom fakultetu u Beogradu gde je zaposlena pozicija asistenta pripravnika na određeno vreme. U ovom zvanju bio je dva izborna perioda od po tri godine sve do 1986. kada je izabrano zvanje asistenta na katedri za termotehniku na neodređeno vreme. Tokom celog perioda asistentskog staža, ukupno 13 godina, održavao je sve vidove vežbi iz predmeta rastlovne uređaje i projektovi industrijskih rastlovnih uređaja, rastlovna potrenja i topotne pumpe. Pri održavanju vežbi posebnu pažnju posvećivo laboratorijskom radu. Veliki doprinos peka je dao i na podizanju opređenju laboratorije za rastlovnu tehniku. Pored spomenutih predmeta, PG drže u neonizicijske kurseve iz broskih rastlenih uređaja, kao i iz rastlenih uređaja na mobilnim sredstvima za potrebe saradnja sa privredom. U prenošenju znanja bio je kjasan i koncizan, uspešno je prilođavao svoj rad organizovanju vežbi sa jako velikim brojem studenta. Znanje doktora tehničkih nauka stekao je aprila 1993. godine na Maškom fakultetu u Beoradu, gde je odbranio doktorsku disertaciju pod nazivom termički kontaktni otpori kod radnjevača toplote sa lamenacim rebrima. Novembra iste godine PEGA je biva izabran u zvanje docenta na određeno vreme u trajanju od 1993. do 1998. Maja 1995. godine izvanično je pustio Maški fakultet u Beorodu i prešao je da radi u Ameriku. Inostrano iskustvo tokom rada na Mašinskom fakultetu Letni semestar 1983-1984. PG je provio na Danskom tehničkom univerzitetu u Kopenhagenu, laboratoriji za hlađenje, gde je kao stipendista Danske vladio radi na ispitivanju zeotropskih smeša za topotne pumpe. Septembra 1986. je bio na studijskom boraku u Švedskoj kao gost Švedske inženjerske akademije u Stokholmu. 1989. godine dobio stipendiju za usrašavanje u SAD, gde je takođe prvo letni semestar na univerzitetu Missouri Rolla, kada je prvi put otišao u Ameriku. Marta 1993. godine odlazi na naučno-stručno jednogodišnje plaćeno usavršavanje na Univerzitetu Illinois Urbana, gde je pozvan da učestvuje kao saradnik na jednom istraživačkom projektu. I nakon odlaske iz Beograda nastavio aktivno da učestvuje u radu katedre i laboratorije za termotehniku, o čemu svedoče brojni studenti, doktorski studije i profesori koji su imali priliku i čast da sarađuju sa njim na mnogobrojim istraživačkim projektima. Nakon odlaska sa mašinica, šta se dešavalo? Dakle, PG je počeo da radi na Univerzitetu Illinoisu, Urbana 1993. godine, gde je tokom svoje karijere i postao profesor. Bavio se istraživanjima rastlenih sistema i mikrokanalskim zmjivačima toplote, prirodnim i sintetičkim rastlenim povidima za različite namene, komercijalna industrijska primjena u kosmosu, vazdušni sistemi, automobilska industrija. Bio je direktor Centra za klimatizaciju i uhlađenje ACRC na istom univerzitetu. To je istraživački centar zadužen za sradnje univerzitete industrije, a fokusiran je na tehnologije sa parnim rasladnim kompresivnim mašinama. Ovo je centar čiji je dr. Hrnja bio direktor, osnovan je pre 30 godina, čine ga 30 kompanija članica koje finansiraju istraživanje više od 100 istraživača, od toga 14 profesora, 66 diplomskih i postdiplomskih studenta i više od 20 gostujućih predavača. Profesor Hrnjak je bio takođe osnivač, vlasnik i predstavnik istraživačke kompanije u Americi pod nazivom Creative Thermal Solution, CTS, koji zapošljava 50 inženjera. Njegova kompanija objedinjavala je aktivnosti ACRC, znači ovoga centra za klimatizaciju i hlađenje, i industrije, i bavila se predkonkurentnim izraživanjem u funkciji obrazovanja. Bio je član prestižne američke organizacije SAE, društva automobilskih inženjera, ASME, američkog udruženja mašinskih inženjera, ASHRE, Američko udruženje inženja za grejanje i hlađenje i klimatizaciju. Bio je član upravnog odbora IIR-a, znači Međunarodnog udruženja za amonječno hlađenje i bio je i urednik nekoliko naučno-sručnih časopisa. Među ostalim počastima izvaja se medalja Gustav Lorenzen, G&E Hall i Rittinger, koji je dobio kao nagrade za svoj dogodišnji rad. Bio je član Akademije inženjenskih nauka Srbije i Saveza maških i elektrotekničnih inženjenja Srbije, koji je društva KGH u Beogradu. Tokom svoje karijere objavio više od 150 članaka u vrhunskim časopisima, 350 tehničkih radova, 100 izveštaja, održao je više od 150 predavanja po pozivu širom sveta, napisao nekoliko poglavlja u knjigama, 
a po njegovim je sorstvenim doktorirao i diplomirao preko 120 studenta. Što se tiče njegovog angažovanja u KGH, to vam je vjerojatno vrlo poznato, tokom cele svoje karijere PG aktivno sarađivao sa društvom za KGH, objavljujući radove u KGH časopisu i učestvujući na našem kongresu. Za svoje angažovanje je nagrađen plaketom KGH 2004. godine, a posljednjih godine, imajući vidu njegovo ekstremno angažovanje i zauzetost, kongres je bio izvjetna prilika da sa njim porazgovaramo i direktno, a i kroz njegovo uvodno predavanje i radove koji je izlagao na tradicionalnom forumu u posljednjom razvojnoj tehnici, čujemo iz prve ruke kako detalje mnogobanih izdraživanja kojima je radio takvi pregled, dešavanja i trendova u svjetskoj razvojnoj tehnici. Eto, to je otprilike ta biografija. Ona deluje onako, ona je impozantna, naravno, ja bi je samo na neki način dopunio malo ličnim stvarima, odnosom sa PEG-om, koje smo svi mi imali, naravno i Peja, i Rine, i ja, i naše kolege, kako ne bi ispalo da pričamo samo o suvoparne činjenice. Dakle, ja sam to neko moje druženje sa PEG-om počeo na dodiplomskim studijama, gde je on meni praktično bio asistent dve godine i naravno puno mi je pomogao u izradi mog diplomskog rada i naravno kasnije kada sam nastavio na fakultetu pomogao mi u izradi mog magistarskog rada. Mi smo zajedno sarađivali na mesto asistenta nekih pet godina, tada smo imali jako veliki broj studenta, imali smo intenzivno laboratorijske istraživanja, tako da je i ta saradnja i druženje bilo vrlo intenzivno. Ja sam zapisao i pokušat ću da vam samo kroz nekoliko anegdota na neki način dočaram kakav je Pega bio kao čovek. Ja sam tim anegdotama dao neke male naslove. Prva je predosetljivost. Znači, htio bih da kažem da je Pega, to je vratno i vaše iskustvo, apsolutno svima bio na raspolaganju i bio spreman u svakom trenutku da pomogne svakome komu se obratio. Dakle, sećanjem je vraćena neka naša lepa druženja na katedri za termotehniku. Tada smo imali onu našu salu gde smo pili zadnjiške kafu i dolazili su i drugi katedara i to je bilo stvarno jedno lepo vreme koga se rado sećam. I vrlo često se dešavalo da zazvoni telefon i naravno pega ode, javi se i tamo na stol sekretarica, on bukvalno sedne na ovim stol sekretarica, uzme telefon i krene da razgovara. Onda naravno počinju šali do vikivanja, mi smo to nazivali projektovanje preko telefona. Dakle, nekoga je zvao da mu nešto pomogne i on čovjek je seo i bez obzira što tamo stoji kafa i mi u jednom veselom, lepom raspoloženju, on je u svom stilu onako sedeo i pričao i pričao i pričao. I to je moglo da traje i po pola sata i duže. Sljedeća je posvećenost. Mi smo imali jako puno studenta tih godina, dakle, neko mi je rekao da smo u jednog generacije imali čak 120 studenta. Intenzivno smo radili, radili smo zajedno, radili smo u istoj sali, pregledali studenske radove, onako velika sala, pa smo sedeli po dijagonali i to je trajalo nekada jako dugo i bilo je izuzetno naporno, znači kad vam dođe po 50-60 studenta da im pregledate radove, To je moglo da nekada trajalo i do 10 sati uvečer, nekada i kasnije. I ja sam se trudio da budem što efikasniji, naravno pravičan i da to pogledam kako treba, ali da to radim efikasno. Međutim, Pega je onako u svom stilu svakom studentu prilazio, objašnjavao mu, objašnjavao mu, ništo mu je objašnjavao i to je jako dobro za studente koji to znanje su sposobni da primene. Bilo je problema jer je bilo studenta koji su ga belo gledali Ja sam imao cek, možda im priča još dva sata, njega čeka još trije studenta tamo, već je kasno. Tako da sam ga ja čak jednom pozvao da sa strane da popričamo i onako možda čak i netaktično rekao, pego, pa on pojma nema, nemoj da gubiš vreme, znači, ajmo dalje. Naravno, nije to bilo pedagoški, ali bilo je potrebno stvarno. Sledeće je ta njegova energija, ja bih rekao da je to jedna bezgranična energija i entuzijazam i Ono što je interesantno je da to nije moglo da se, to moglo da se vidi na njegovom licu, da je on mrtav umoran, ali ne na njegovom delu. Dakle, on je radio potpuno istim intenzitetom i svima izlazio u susret. Mi smo tada radili, za mene je to bilo izuzetno interesantno i u stvari, 
ako me neko pita, neskreno bih rekao da je to jedino pravo istraživanje kako treba da se radi na fakultetu. Mi smo radili razvoj agregata za hlađenje kamiona hladnjača sa prvom petoletkom iz Srstenika. To je bio jako interesantan projekat, rađen bukvalno od samog početka. Dakle, termokin kupljen i sečen na delove, izmerene sve moguće dimenzije i pravljen je bukvalno od nule sa domaćim proizvođačima. I razminjevači, toploti, sve naravno ove ventili i tako dalje, to je kupljeno. I onda smo mi to razvijali. Znači, napravite nešto, pa pustite to, pa se meri, pa se meri danju, pa se meri noću pa vidite to nešto nije dobro, pa shvatite da nije dobro, na primer, razmak između rebara ili, ne znam, tehnologija, pa onda probamo drugo, pa treće. To je trajalo istraživanje godinama. Na kraju je napravljen taj agregat, on je bio jako dobar. Mislim da je oko 400 komada izvezeno u Rusiju, međutim, tad su počele one sankcije i, nažalost, taj posao se više nije nastavio. Anegdota iz tog perioda je da smo umeli da ostanemo do kasnu noć. Dakle, jednom smo ostali, bilo je, ja mislim, dva sata noću. Tada nije bilo mobilnih telefona, nije bilo ničega. Kad smo izašli iz laboratorija, naša laboratorija, znate, gde je dole u podromu skroz, kad smo izašli napolje, svuda, apsolutno mrkvi mrak, mi nekako dolazimo do vrata fakulteta, fakultet zaključen. Naravno, ovoga portira nema i onda počinje... Igranka, dakle, pega i ja smo se razdvojili i krenuli da tražimo portira po tom mrkvom raku po fakultetu Bauljevići. Na kraju smo ga našli, ja sam to na mašincu rekao dekanu da povremeno obrati pažnju kako spava u kabinetu dekana, tako da probudili ga i pustio nas i napolje. Poslednje što bi rekao kao anegdotu i kao napomenu da je pega bio bukvalno vizionar i uvek je gledao par koraka napred i radio naravno za opšte dobro. Tu sam se setio, razmišljajući o svim našim druženjima, njegovog belog juga i prikolice koju je sa našim majstrom Milanom, koji je nažalost pokojni, bukvalno njih dvojica su sami napravili tu prikolicu i mi smo imali istraživanje, mislim da je takođe bilo za prvu petoletku, i ta su bila ona pisma, znate, odete sa pismom u radnju, kupite i to ide na teret naručioca istraživanja. I mi zakačemo tu priklicu na juga, odemo tamo u Karadžođevo ili gde su bile neke silne gođere, i sad Pega naručuje, ja stavim pored njega i jedan spisak. I Pega kaže, ok, dajte nam osam kutijastih profila, ovaj, Ja pogledam spisak, piše šest. Kaže Pega, dajte nam 30 metara kabla, ja pogledam spisak, piše 20. Ja ga pogledam, a on mi kaže, ma treba će nam to za neku drugu instalaciju. Tako da, tako je bio Pega. Ajmo dalje. Ova treća tačka našeg programa praktično, ako možete pustiti onu drugu prezentaciju. Mislim, nije prezentacija, se napravi samo. Ja samo ne znam, to se nismo dogovorili. Na toj prezentaciji su linkovi. Ja se nadam da možemo da pustimo direktno odatle. Možete sledeći slajd, da, mogu i ja slajd. Dakle, ova treća taška, ja sam u stvari pogledao malte ne sve što sam imao i što sam dobio sa strane snimke, peginih predavanja, intervjua, neke tekstove o njemu, ne bi li napravio neki izbor. I to nije bilo lako, međutim, eto, odabrao sam ovaj rad trendovi industrijskom hlađenju amonijakom. To je njegovo izlaganje na 47. međunarodnom kongresu KGH 2016. godine u kojoj Pega, vidjet ćete sami, koristeći Čirilicu, govori o osnovu industrijskog hlađenja i generalnim problemima i izvorjama, pokazujući svoju vanserijsku sposobnost da sagleda problem, približi ga širemo u torovimu, predloži rešenje. Tako, ako možete sledeći slajd, pa ovaj link. Ja nisam bio u programu da bilo šta kažem, ali inspirisam kolegama mladima. Ja bih volao da samo prikažem jedan njegov razvojni put. Od rane mladosti Pega je 
u sebi razvio jedan istraživački duh od rane mladosti, koji je nastavio tokom studiranja i imao je jednu veliku sreću da svoja prva eksperimentalna saznanja u saradnji sa profesorom Savom Vujićem i sa profesorom Markovskim i kasnije sa profesorom Kosijem u napredi i sa tim znanjima ode za Ameriku i oduševi ljude sa kojima je počeo da radi dalje istraživanje. Malo sam emotivan, nemojte mi zamiriti ako malo što kažu u glasu, kod drhta. Ono što je jako bitno kod njega, vidjeli ste ga na slikama, on je stalno naspen. Ja ga u životu nisam vidio da je on bio namrgožen, da se bilo za kim posveđao, a sva ta znanja koje je sticao u laboratorijskim istraživanjima u Americi, on je nesebično svima nama ovde za vreme svakog njegovog boravka prenosio, a nekad je dolazio i namenski. Ostavio nam je, i ako nas sada od ozgo sluša, ja bih vam se u vaše ime i u svih nas zahvalio na sve što je učinio za našu nauku, za termotehniku i za sve što je ostavio iza njega. Vojte računa, imate dobre profesore, imate sada jednu lepu laboratoriju sa određenim instrumentima koje je on poslao. Nažalost, neće moći da prisustuje njega nekim ispitivanja i moje želju. Tako da, nemojte misliti da su oni mnogo pometniji preko u svetu od nas. Znači, vi sve to što ćete posle, ako od vas neko odirno usavršavanje, nemojte da ostajete, vratite se u zemlju. I on je uspeo da to prenese tamo i da pomogne našoj struci. Ja mu u ime svih vas se zahvaljujem na tome i ostaće trajni njegovi radovi još dugo, dugo godina koje neće biti prevaziđeni. Vama hvala na prisutstvu. Starije kolege sve znaju o njemu, a vi mladi idite njegovim putem i nećete pogrešiti. Hvala vam. Poštovane kolege, kolegenice, Upravo možemo da počnemo sa našim predavanjima o pozivu naših eminentnih gostiju i ja bih u tom smislu pozvao kolegu doktora Predega Krinjaka da prezentira svoj rad sa University of Illinois, da prezentira svoj rad pod nazivom Promene i tendencije u industrijskom hlađenju amonijakom. Izvolite, kolega. Hvala puno. Hvala vam što ste ovde. Meni je uvek izuzetno drago da dođem. Actually, I should also switch to English. And today, at this moment, I want to have a relatively, a presentation at a relatively light note. If you want to Uh, here is something very interesting and very much in details. Please uh, come tomorrow. I have two uh, quite nice uh, uh, talks. You'll love it if you are in uh, in area of uh, refrigerant flows, in oil flows, uh, in heat transfer. But today I wanted to tell you something about the trends, which is easier, lighter for this uh, beginning of uh, uh, of the meeting. And I want to talk about um, uh, trends in ammonia industrial refrigeration the way I see them. And I'd like to give you the update um, about the uh, situation in industrial refrigeration, direction that the industry is taking to move uh, forward uh, towards uh, lower charges, safer, simpler, and more cost-effective solutions. What is in this industrial refrigeration? Uh, typically, it is applied for cold stores, process industry, big cooling stuff sometimes, sport complexes, typically custom design and built almost always on site. Steel is a major material. Uh, high capacities, large components, 
huge refrigerant charges. Mostly uses ammonia because it is very uh, inexpensive, efficient, uh, good fluid. Uh, proven over centuries now, we can say. Unfortunately, it typically requires uh, professional personnel to run these systems. And let me illustrate that in a few uh, simple slides. Everything is big in industrial refrigeration. Compressors are big, many of them. Uh, accompanying vessels with a lot of charge. We are talking about tons and tons and tens of tons of ammonia in these systems when they are uh, uh, large. Typically, uh, the size of the vessel could be translated into the charge. And that's sometimes not very good. Well, I'll tell you in a few slides just why I don't think it is good. There is a lot of equipment everywhere, on the roof, uh, on the floor, left and right. With the numerous evaporators, uh, disagree. Uh, um, and uh, there is a very strong pressure for sound environmental solutions. Actually, this is very good for ammonia because ammonia is relatively, not sure, absolutely inexpensive fluid. Now, equipment may or may not be, but definitely, uh, uh, ammonia has a good uh, good position. Uh, it is seen as a, as a as a zero GWP or very low GWP and very efficient fluid. The the statements in bold that I put here at the at the end are we waiting for big earthquakes in California? Which uh, the it is not a question whether they will happen. It is just a question when it will happen. Something like what happened in Japan, in Fukushima, to realize that not only nukes uh, could be a problem, but also big uh, uh, industrial refrigeration systems, especially in uh, LA area, in Los Angeles area, where these big industrial uh, uh, refrigeration systems are now almost in downtown in the center of the city. And if uh, there would be a big earthquake, uh, we could be facing a potentially dangerous situation with tons and tons of ammonia in a highly populated area. So what can we do and what is happening right now? And I think this is the trend that I wanted to tell you something about and shed some light on it. And this is decentralization. And what we see today is that people are thinking and building multiple units of lower capacities with the smaller sizes, that means reduce uh, charges. And even in a, in a case of a leak, that is really minuscule amount of uh, ammonia. It is safer and, oops, excuse me, and it is possibly less expensive. And I think that's the key. What we see, I think industrial refrigeration is probably the last segment of our industry where uh, contractors are dominating the field, not industrial companies. And many larger companies have realized the opportunity to take a bigger part of the cake and make a mass produce uh, systems that would reduce the cost and uh, give them a little bit uh, more possibility to make a profit. I think that is one of the reasons uh, besides safety uh, uh, why we are seeing these changes that I'm trying to tell you uh, something about. And these are these uh, new markets. Basically, this is open area for those who have a good product to come and fight not against their competitors, but somebody who is not very well organized. There are various options to fit different applications in the directions that I'm talking about. First step, and that's what some people are doing, is to um, shrink the big machine room into the small container-like structure. And this is what you see over here. Uh, everything what would be in the normal machine room is reduced, it is enclosed, and will be brought, put on the roof or maybe on the side next to the uh, cold store. The other option is what we see. I have uh, here borrowed 
uh, uh, from uh, Micron's, uh, their system, prefabricated system, which is a chiller for carbon dioxide. So you have ammonia chiller that uh, cools uh, uh, carbon dioxide, and then carbon dioxide is uh, pumped throughout the facility, and that is the way to reduce the charge and reduce the time of building, erecting the system in the field. The other, uh, and I will spend a little bit more time on this, the other option is to basically think about industrial refrigeration, same as uh, you would think about uh, air conditioning systems where you have a uh, rooftop units put on the roof and with uh, no or just a little bit of uh, ductwork, you serve the purpose of that uh, uh, that, that unit that means to provide the cooling to air or maybe something else. So this is what, what I'm presenting here. And these are typically in a sizes of something between uh, 100 to 300 kilowatt capacity. And we see them today in various options with evaporative cool condenser, with the uh, water cool condenser in the cooling and the cooling tower and the air cool condensers. And I have, uh, have had the pleasure to be in this um, distribution center in Long Beach when they were uh, putting on the roof these uh, something like 27, 28 of these units in the big distribution center in Long Beach, basically in LA. And you see many of these kind of container-like uh, units like air conditioners uh, put on some Walmart or some other big, uh, uh, big uh, supermarket here, we have a cold store with cooling air condition, cooling systems, rooftop cooling units. And these boxes typically almost always have two parts, condensing and evaporator part inside, and in this particular case, I'll tell you something more about, this is a kind of miniature uh, cooling tower. And that cooling tower, the purpose of this cooling tower is really to reduce condensing temperature and to reduce the discharge temperature of the compressor. So that's, that's why. I would uh, maybe question whether that's the most, uh, um, uh, the simplest or the cheapest option, but definitely one of the options. And uh, you see here then uh, this uh, miniature cooling tower and uh, nickel brace stainless steel uh, condenser for ammonia. So this here happened to be something around uh, 100 kilowatt capacity. This is relatively small, very small screw compressor. And this screw compressor is open and it is presented here. Even I will show you in some other slides that there are more and more hermetic compressors for ammonia. There is also maybe new to some people. So this is that compact screw compressor with controls with a pump for uh, uh, cooling water and variable speed pumps and also variable speed compressors. Evaporators, of course, stainless steel, I would maybe think about using uh, something like aluminum or something uh, cheaper, but they don't want to take a risk, especially in the first approaches. But what is very interesting and what I wanted to show to you is this uh, unit here, which basically is a controller of an exit condition from the evaporator, which provides a wet exit and much better uh, heat transfer in the evaporator. Uh, that is a relatively new approach with um, with the capacitive, capacitive probe. This is how it looks like from inside. And I was there when they were opening, this here are opening before opening and after opening of these holes where air will be turned up and pushed down. It takes a little bit less even than 20 minutes with a sozo to come there and cut the hole in while I was there, trucks and trucks were coming with the new units that were pre-assembled, and then the crane was putting them 
same like you would do that, that with, the, with the rooftop units, as I said, in uh, air conditioning systems. Very similar to that. These uh, chambers and corridors are cooled from above. This here is that opening, and you see how tall is uh, and another opening with, this is without unit mounted, and this is with unit mounted, and uh, that is how it looks like. In addition to that type of approach, some people, and I have here cited uh, uh, Italian company Zudek, they, these guys are not afraid to make a rooftop unit with microchannel condensers for ammonia made out of uh, aluminum uh, tubes. And uh, when I was doing that 20 years ago, people in industrial refrigeration were making fun of me, saying it will never happen that somebody will make a microchannel uh, uh, condenser for industrial plant. They say, have you seen any, any condenser that has a smaller tube than uh, uh, three quarters of an inch? And I said, uh, yes, I had. But anyway, um, uh, what else is happening new? Hermetic ammonia compressors are helping in my system solution, in my, in my mind, uh, uh, solutions for the smaller um, ammonia hermetic systems, because with this, these uh, hermetic compressors either scroll as presented here or reciprocating with hermetic compressor, it is possible to make a chiller identical as R22 chiller that behaves same as R22 chiller, it acts, and it just has uh, ammonia, which is uh, definitely extremely low, if not among the lowest GWP uh, refrigerants and uh, uh, probably the highest uh, uh, efficiency. And of course, this here is the first, in my, to my knowledge, the first commercially available system. And we have uh, made this uh, condenser for the Micom. This is a prototype of their uh, hermetic uh, uh, scroll compressor. And that is uh, th this uh, uh, chiller, ammonia chiller is installed in Japan as a heat pump and a chiller in uh, numerous, numerous uh, uh, places. We have started this over 15 years ago with the first chiller. This is in my lab with the open uh, Bitzer compressor, uh, stainless steel, uh, Alpha Laval, uh, uh, braised uh, condenser, uh, evaporator and condenser is microchannel over here that we have been using later at CTS for various uh, needs. And then today, that means a year ago, we have built our first newest uh, um, air-cooled um, uh, chiller with a microchannel condenser and here open compressor still. Oops. And um, as a conclusion, I wanted to say that uh, I believe that ammonia industrial refrigeration demonstrates vitality and evolution. If there is a need, because uh, people typically think about ammonia uh, industrial refrigeration segment as very, very conservative and traditional, unlike air conditioning that, that had, uh, had a better ear to the needs of society to change is, now we see that even uh, industrial refrigeration people are starting, starting to evolve. Uh, a decentralized system, in my mind, uh, with a very low charge is in a main direction that we see today. There are several big companies that are posed to take a big part of the market. And I believe in next maybe five to 10 years, we will see several of them more. Variety of solutions address, uh, 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 address a diversified requirements. So maybe you want to cool either secondary fluid or air or uh, CO2 chiller or something like that. And I believe that the extremely low charges are the next uh, step to go. How low is uh, low? It is, oops, it is presented here. 18 grams per kilowatt was the charge of our first ammonia chiller that had uh, 15 kilowatt capacity at normal conditions. Give me any fluid give me any unit that has anything similar to 18 grams per kilowatt charge. I challenge you, today we have per kilowatt 150 grams 
of, uh, uh, of uh, propane or isobutane allowed, or that is what typically people see, we have made it for less than 50. But ammonia is phenomenally good fluid for charge reduction for various reasons, primarily for thermophysical properties of that, uh, of that fluid. So with this, I would uh, end up uh, my presentation, be open to, I know that we don't have time now for discussion, I'll be here to talk with you uh, if uh, you have any interest. And tomorrow morning, I have two great, lovely, interesting presentation. Come and uh, see that and we can talk even more. Thank you very much. Zahvaljujem kolegi Hrnjaku na inspirativnom prezentaciji i uvodu u ono što će se dešavati na... Dakle, dakle videli ste, podsjetili smo se kako izgleda jedno pegino predavanje precizno, jasno, očigledno sa velikim znanjem koje stoji za svega toga vizionarski, kako smo i rekli, sa nekim novim rešenjima koji se prvi put pojavljuju u te daleke 2016. već, znači pre šest godina. Sledeći slajd, molim vas, je u stvari samo diskusija nakon prezentacije efikasni, kompaktni, transkritični CO2 sistemi za klimatizaciju najbržeg voza. Tu možete da vidite kako u stvari jedna jako kvalitetna prezentacija koja je stvarno ostavila veliki utisk na mene, toga se sećam, to je bilo 2019. godine, kako može da iz nje priziđe jedna jako interesantna diskusija i energija sa kojom PEGA odgovara na ta pitanja i uopšte kako se ponaša. To se u stvari radi o projektu koji se odnosi na zamenu sistema za klimatizaciju najbrže kinoskog voza koji je radio sa Freonom 407C na sistem sa CO2. Znači, to je bio osnovni PEGIN zadatak i on je na kraju uspeo da napravi sa svojim ekipom, naravno, uređaj koji je 30% manji, ima veći kapacitet i bolju efikasnost. Dakle, ako možemo sad sa sledećeg slajda ovaj link. I see. What is the criteria for saying Bitzer was the best compressor choice? Ah, that's a very fair question because my two. My oh, I'm sorry. Very fair question. I am too easy when I say something was better than the other, and it is good to be. Kind of reminded that uh, things are not so simple as they uh, appear to be. Uh, what is the best choice? Uh, you try to find, first of all, uh, to have a good size of the compressor, and then good efficiency, then a good weight of the compressor. Uh, it was very important for us to have a very light compressor. Unfortunately, none of these compressors is a good choice for this particular application. Why? Because all of them are semi-hermetic. And we were competing with a hermetic compressor uh, in the baseline. So we had to uh, try to save in weight on some other weights. So this was the lightest compressor, not by far. Now, the other compressor that was... Uh, very, very light, and would have been, quite frankly, better selection for us is this compressor. If somebody, if someone, and there is another bulk compressor, there is, a, there is a radial compressor. Those of you who, who have followed, for instance, automotive development, automotive CO2 development, maybe remember when Aubrey's compressor, they have a five-cylinder uh, radial uh, piston compressor that was the lightest uh, of all compressors and even now the new design uh, like that was, is really the lightest uh, and we were just not in a good moment when we were designing our system 
So that is the reason why we have selected that compressor. Yes, please. I, I just would say that uh, you said Bok is the best, but are you looking at the COP or? Because uh, wait, here, Copla, wait. Copla, I Copla have a uh, far away best COP. Uh, yeah, motor Copla weight. 2.7, Bok 2.23, and Bits something like 2. Co co uh, uh, have you seen what is uh, uh, isentropic efficiency? Uh, they, these are ungodly. I even don't believe that, it, that we haven't made a mistake in calculating like 80%. We have uh, normally seen their compressors around 60, 70%. And I don't sell uh, bits of compressors uh, by no means. Uh, the, this was, uh, the criteria here was the weight. That was the criteria number one, and number two was a good uh, isentropic efficiency and difficult now to tell you, I know isentropic efficiency is for all of them because we have tried all of them, but it is maybe not fair to reveal all of that. Yes. Thank you. Risa. Professor Risa Tsitsonkov. Yes. You compare CO2 unit you compare CO2 units uh, with uh, conventional air conditioning units with uh, R407C. And in both cases, you put expansion valves because uh, compared to be equal. But uh, what do you mean to, if you put uh, ejector in the CO2 system? Additional improvement will be sure? Absolutely. And uh, we have been among the first in the world to work uh, in ejectors in CO2, and, but uh, there was no need here to use ejector. You don't, uh, you don't uh, use all of your tools from a toolbox uh, when there is no need for that. You just use as much as needed to come to the goal that is, uh, that is uh, put in front of you. We are waiting for another project or another project and we know how to make it much better. Fair question, correct. Thank you very much for the question. Yes. Did you plan it for that, for that train, uh, two independent uh, system, uh, refrigerating systems? Two, two independent. Yes, two independent refrigeration How many people uh, uh, can be seated in that train? Wow. Because of, uh, no, I'm asking because of that uh, capacity, 44 kilowatts, I think. Can we please use the microphones? The translators yeah. cannot the, hear what the, you're saying. The question, the question was, uh, uh, what is the number of people in the train to compare the capacity of 44 kilowatts uh, for one, uh, one, for one whatever car in the train? Honestly, I don't know. Okay. I, sorry. Thank you for the presentation, very interesting. Uh, I got the impression that the baseline unit was uh, very close to, to being an old R22 unit with the uh, more yeah, yeah, right. put yeah, in. Absolutely. Do you have any idea if uh, any of the competitions offer uh, a more, let's say, optimized for, uh, for newer conditions? Uh, so, so maybe the baseline was a bit uh, unfair? Yes, I'm aware of that. The question was whether uh, uh, th th there is a better uh, baseline than, uh, than that that we have had. Yes, I'm aware of that. I'm also aware of the, the fact that some other people have tried to... Uh, uh, there is another company that have uh, uh, asked another uh, Chinese uh, uh, R&D center to develop the same thing. And they haven't even come to with the same baseline to the same uh, COP that we have that we have achieved. Yes, there is uh, no question. There are better uh, uh, better systems, uh, and uh, believe me, I also know how we can make our system much better. One one of the directions is what Professor Tsitsonkov said is to use ejector, which we haven't. I know what we need to do with the uh, heat exchangers. I know much better compressor than we have. Uh, you know, uh, things about these comparisons, this is always a moving target. Uh, we, we have that uh, experience with many technologies. It's not only now for a train. We've been doing that over decades for car systems. 
And this is phenomenal uh, uh, benefit for the industry. <clears throat> there is phenomenal benefit because technology in the car, for instance, I'll give you an example, in a car air conditioning systems, efficiency had doubled over 15 years, doubled, because we have measured the first systems when efficiency wasn't the problem. When CO2 came in, those who were against CO2, they were saying, oh, this is so bad fluid, you cannot do anything with it. And then we, we have shown that we can do better than 134A in car air conditions. Then they said, oh, we can now make our 134A system better. And they did. And we worked on the same project to improve 134A. And then we said, okay, now let's go improve CO2 again. And you go that and this is kind of a, uh, <coughs> a process that, that, that lasts. And I think that this is happening in industry, in science, everywhere. We learn, we improve, and then uh, the other competition uh, do the same thing. And we come and do better our part. But uh, my, my point is, we have from a get-go made this better. And obviously, you, you see that there are so many other things how to improve it. So let's go further. You know, that is, that is, the, that is uh, the way how things go. Hmm? We need to... Oh. oh, oh. What is the volume of CO2 used per unit? And are there any losses in refilling needed during operations? Okay. That's a very fair question. Uh, 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 that was one of the weak points and it is still for automotive systems because they vibrate here. Uh, this system vibrates but we haven't installed any hose or anything like that. Uh, the user doesn't like that and we have just made elastic uh, pipes that uh, give, us, uh, uh, give us sufficient uh, 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 movements. Uh, now, in all honesty, I need to tell you that some of our first design had failed and uh, pipes had uh, broken and then we had to fix that and we have fixed fixed that and it works now and uh, we, we so we don't have a leaks right now. <coughs> Indeed, uh, if the outdoor heat exchangers get very dirty, will the fall? Yes. We're all, all worse for CO2 than 407C. Hmm. Good question. Uh, Good question. I would even say that 407C would maybe have even, even higher sensitivity to that. Here is why. You know, uh, 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 CO2 is uh, very bad in two parts compared to conventional refrigerants. Uh, one is this here, because uh, we compress to much higher pressure and to much higher temperature. We believe in thermodynamics. And thermodynamics tells us that whenever you go to higher pressure and to higher temperature, <laughs> you will need to pay in generated uh, uh, entropy, uh, it, there is an uh, higher work and so on. This is one of the, ah. Oh. So this here is one of the weak parts. So, but that weak part, we have improved. Uh, uh, actually, we are taking that in as an advantage because in cycle analysis, that is not seen as an advantage because the size of the heat exchanger there doesn't matter. But uh, look at this temperature difference here. This temperature difference here is significant. 90% of heat is transferred in 10% of the surface area in the gas cooler. So from that point of view, I expect less sensitivity. From this side, these other 90% of, uh, of surface area has to do something uh, here. And as low as we go with the exit temperature from gas cooler, 
it is better for the system efficiency. Rule of thumb, every degree C that you can go lower, this is something about seven, seven and a half percent of efficiency. One degree lower, seven and a half uh, percent of efficiency, huge. Now, what Andy is saying is, when we reduce the flow rate, what will happen? And this line will go like this due to fouling of the heat exchanger. We will have a lower, lower air flow rate. So this inclination will be higher and maybe we will have to go higher with this exit temperature. That would be, uh, that would detrimentally affect CO2 and maybe more than, than that. Yes? It's a notorious it's a notorious problem for railway, particularly for air conditioning units. But I think a, a focus should be on making the unit more easily cleanable to bring it back to the as new condition, which the existing units don't do. So the dirt just gets built up and built up and built up. You can wash the train, but you're just pushing the dirt further into the heat exchanger. So if you design your unit to be cleanable, you can retain the better advantage. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I 100% agree with that. Uh, maybe that is one of the reasons why the customer didn't like Mike Chow heater changes, but they like uh, uh, conventional round tube. Uh, uh, not much uh, <laughs> enhancement on the on the fin side because fin here is not uh, extended at all. And I think maybe maybe I'm taking too much time. I should. Uh, okay, now here is another. What was the criteria for saying this? Or no? Uh, oh, I have finished. Okay, we need to stop. Thank you very much for great questions. I appreciate it very much. Se deša u njegovoj laboratoriji urbani SAD i vidjet ćete da kako on praktično vizionarski priča o značajnom prodoru tri nove tehnologije, a to je smanjenje punje na NH3, ekspanzije upotrebe ugljen dioksida i korišćenje ugljovodonika uz maksimalno smanjenje punjenja zbog problema sa eksplozivnošću. Evo ga intervju. Go together with Pega Hernjak, the great Pega Hernjak, professor Pega Hernjak, and also entrepreneur um, who set up um, the famous CTS, Creative Thermal Solutions, we're here in one of his labs, and, and we thought it would be a good opportunity to hear from Pega about, you know, where, where, where are we now? What's the status in terms of uh, technology development for ammonia, hydrocarbons, and, and CO2? Um, so maybe I think you want to start off with ammonia on the low charge yeah. ammonia. Well, what's going on in that space? I think what is uh, on the, in ammonia business uh, in development in ammonia technology, the most important is uh, uh, charge reduction. And this is a charge reduction is going along with uh, uh, kind of a unitary development of unitary systems that are uh, factory made and then brought to the uh, to the site and installed in a way very similar to rooftop units or other industrial refrigeration, industrial air conditioning units. So this is a package, plug and play package. package systems, right? That's a, that is a revolution in terms of... That is a revolution in industrial refrigeration yeah. because yeah. it wasn't uh, uh, present uh, uh, so far. Some mm -hmm. people have been trying to do that. It's basically, basically driven from the U.S., right? It is it's driven basically from all happening in, the, in America right now, that is not the rest yeah. of the world. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, only in U.S. I believe it will happen elsewhere in the world, mm -hmm. or we should also say that a good... Uh, uh, there, there are several good players elsewhere. Yeah. For instance, Maikawa is yeah, doing yeah. that, or yeah. Star Refrigeration in mm -hmm. Europe. Uh, but most of that activity, by far, the strongest activity is happening here in US. Mm -hmm. And basically, the direction is to make a package systems, reduce the charge, reduce the potential danger in the case of uh, earthquakes or some other uh, catastrophic leaks that could happen in a system, and that charge reduction is being done by either reducing the size or not either or, but in addition to that is
or not either or, but in addition to that is uh, by changing the design of a heat exchangers and the vessels to uh, reduce internal volume and also play with the uh, various uh, aspects like a mass uh, flux or a few others to reduce the, the void fraction and the charge of ammonia in the system. So that is, I think, the, 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 the main uh, uh, events and the main change in technology. And I believe that that uh, technology will uh, continue and grow and expand. Uh, and I don't know whether replace or when to replace uh, custom build uh, uh, field directed uh, refrigeration system in industrial applications. Okay. Now moving on to CO2. CO2 is going through kind of almost continuous uh, expansion now. Uh, the healthiest probably grow uh, is happening in supermarket yeah. industry. And we see that uh, mostly in Europe, but also in Japan, in United States, elsewhere, not only, but everywhere. Uh, and uh, uh, the changes, technological changes are not only in modification of the cycle, mm -hmm. uh, uh, ways to reduce the effect of uh, uh, higher ambient uh, uh, temperature, but also to uh, reduce the cost and make uh, more and more uh, attractive from that point uh, uh, CO2 systems. Okay. Um, and we can see also CO2 systems are expanding in into in, industrial to industrial, yeah. and uh, uh, we see lots of uh, CO2 development in car industry, mm -hmm. in refrigeration, and with the uh, expansion of uh, electric cars, yep. many people are considering CO2 uh, as uh, fluid for a reversible uh, system, because CO2 would allow uh, operation of a heat pump in electric car at significantly lower ambient yeah. temperatures, then conventional fluid can do it. Okay. But the question is, yeah. what is the... Yeah, the, 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 yeah that's, a, that's a whole separate discussion. <laughs> yeah. Now, finally, because I'm conscious of the time, um, about hydrocarbons, what's going on? Hydrocarbons... hydrocarbons uh, from a technology point of view... Uh, the the much, most important... Right? Is, not, not much, it's, really. It's, it's done. We all know that uh, uh, hydrocarbons are excellent refrigerants. So we're not talking about refrigeration good. here. We're not talking about HVAC. Uh, but in both of them, the, the, the limitations and the problem with hydrocarbon is Sorry. not is charge mm -hmm. and uh, flammability mm -hmm. and how to handle the potentials mm -hmm. for, for flammable events. Mm -hmm. And the charge minimization is really the name of the game, same as uh, kind of protective uh, uh, the, uh, devices around this possible spark igniting yeah. uh, 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 situations or components. Okay, but all right, so, you know, you've been, with working with natural refrigerant mm -hmm. technologies in different applications around the world for 20 plus years. Are you confident about the future with regard well, to natural I, refrigerant? I am very confident. Uh, the, the, the growth of each of these applications is, is clear. It is uh, obvious that it is getting stronger and stronger, uh, whether uh, natural refrigerant or CO2 will uh, take all all applications in refrigeration, air conditioning, heat pumps. That remains to be seen. I'm not so certain in that, but I'm absolutely certain that uh, the the growth is uh, market penetration, yeah. penetration is getting it's, uh, it's stronger, and stronger, is dramatically better, and uh, I have no no. Uh, no hesitation to say that I believe that uh, we will see more and more natural refrigerants in every segment. And, and from a technology innovation point of view, I mean, we're really only at the very beginning. There's still a lot of potential to increase efficiency yes. in many of these applications. Yeah, right? absolutely. We're really still, you know, the, the... This is something where really good mechanical engineers mm -hmm. have opportunity to show yeah. how yeah. much they know. Yeah. And I would uh, say, hey, this is also a challenge. Uh, make it better. Show off yourself and the you innovation know. is global now right you're, you're not just seeing it in pockets anymore it's, it's it's really you're seeing in the us you're seeing it and what in you're Europe, seeing in asia in china more yeah, and china is a big market the now now the, the, yeah. the developments are also happening there not only from a market point of view yeah, also from r and yeah. technology okay. and manufacturing okay yes. so, so it's coming a global phenomenon mm -hmm. okay all right thank you again pega great pleasure, Always a pleasure. Mm -hmm. uh,
To bi bilo to. Nadam se da i pored ovih tehničkih malih problema koje smo imali, da smo uspeli onima koji ga ne znaju da dočaramo kakav je Pega bio čovek i istraživač, onima koji ga znaju da podsjetimo na to. Ovo je kraj ove sesije, hvala vam.